Hey guys, what's up? It's Ola. Today we're going to be having a look at some of the stylized filters. I apologize for my lack of regularity. We are just absolutely stacked with work at the moment, which is good for me, but not good for the tutorials. So I can only apologize. So the first one we're going to have a look at is brush strokes. I have some footage here that I shot at Tomorrowland. Uh, just some people in crowds messing around. Um, and if we turn on this, you can see how slow an effect this is. And what it basically does is it almost makes these kind of like um, that. I mean, you can angle them any way you want, and so. But they kind of it basically uh, changes your footage into like strips. Basically, uh, what I like to do with this though is if you bring it like really thin, it kind of looks like glitches, and uh, that can actually be quite an interesting effect, especially if you're varying like the length. You can kind of add some glitch this way by uh, just keyframing the uh, length up there. So that's generally what I use that for. Cartoon is like a whole a world in itself. It doesn't really look great by default. Um, you can do edges, which is quite interesting. As you can see here, this one's a lot faster. Um, you can fill in edges, which is what you have by default, but it's not really until you start playing with um, these that you can kind of get an interesting result. Uh, that one doesn't do much. The detail threshold is the one where you're going to start to see um, everything soften basically unless you come all the way down. Shading steps is basically the threshold. So if the more you bring this down the less um, color information there's going to be in between each color. And here you got the smoothness. So if you want a really hard edge look um, you would probably go there. I mean you would prob I would probably recommend having a bit of smooth this in there somewhere because if not you're going to get really harsh fall off but um, and then for your edges sometimes it's best to just take the edges off to be honest um, I kind of like this look a lot better that being said if you bring up um, that and really like decrease the width so you get a very slight edge it can look interesting again you can play with the hardness so I think the harder you make it look the worse it looks really um, so just bring up the softness a bit. Width is obviously how thick it is. So uh, just basically balancing these three and then in the advanced you've got um, stuff that is really going to kind of like tweak the effect uh, to from, from looking kind of crappy to kind of alright. So uh, if we bring that up there, there we've got a kind of semi interesting useful cartoon effect now. Um, so again, it's it's a really specific look, but you know, if I use this, I, I kind of like to. Uh, if you bring this down, you can get this weird effect. But if you bring it up and get rid of the edges, so you can just do like fill anyway. Um, then you can actually get quite an interesting result, and um, that you know, again, like with any of effects, like you can play with like overlaying it on top of other footage and just playing and seeing how that kind of works. So it adds this kind of. If I toggle this on and off, you can't really, you can sense something's happening there, but you can't really sense what it is. And um, there's there's different ways of blending in, basically, especially once you start playing with just like uh, the edges and you bring the is it the contrast? Yeah. So uh, th there's different ways to bring it in, and this is definitely how I would recommend blending it back in is by separating your effect on a different layer and then playing with the blending modes. So um, that right there is the cartoon effect. Uh, a lot of these I don't really use. Glass is semi interesting. Uh, obviously, it makes it look like you're kind of looking through um, uh, a kind of a piece of glass. Well, that's that's the aim anyway. Um, by default, it's probably going to be uh, you're probably going to want to bring the displacement down somewhat because at 100 it's probably a bit harsh, but. Um, you know, if you play with the lighting and the shading, you can actually tint this slightly and begin to look like, I guess, um, you're looking through a piece of glass. But again, I don't really use these effects that much, so I'm just going to stick to the ones I do use. Kaleida is probably, well, Hextile actually as well. So this basically creates like a honeycomb, and you can, um, if we bring this up, you can get some interesting effects. If you've ever seen any of, uh, like the Bonobo video for, I can't remember what it's called, um, I think it's Cirrus, Cirrus, 
uh, and so you can get some really interesting effects just by using the hex eye and actually bringing it down uh, you can get smearing which kind of like semi attempts to blend stuff together and you're going to get some interesting stuff there especially between this kind of and you can move the center around of course and that is actually a pretty fun effect I've used that a few times and uh, this is kind of like the outer lens so because we're zoomed in so far you probably won't see that but if you uh, if you don't rotate the outer lens so the idea is you've always got a middle and then you've got everything around it that rotates and if I bring the smearing down somewhat you'll see those patterns again so that's kind of cool uh, fold line fold seamlessly is probably the one I use the most because you don't get these nasty jarring kind of uh, things so um, really useful for creating patterns and stuff and you can drop it on just about any piece of footage Kaleida is the same uh, so you can get some interesting uh, depending on what you're filming of course this is all based off of um, whereabouts in the footage so if I toggle this on and off whereabouts in the footage uh, you're kind of like aiming at so if I bring that up there you're going to see if I start to bring it down we're going to spring in some of the crowd if I bring right we're going to start to see like the, the water bottle and just the tops of the trees um, just around here so um, yeah and there's so many different ones here I mean like literally you can just spend hours playing with these things they're pretty cool um, this one's especially cool because it looks like the people in some kind of infinite cube um, and, you know with something like that I would probably just be tempted to do something like this and just bring it like super size and then just have it look like there's a lot of people in a kind of dancing cube kind of cool so clay is cool uh, plastic rept reptile is um, let me try and explain this in a way that makes sense reptile basically allows you to expand the size of your clip so as you can see here, I've, I've scaled my clip. So this is my original clip. I've scaled it down to 27%. But by using Reptile, you can actually expand not only uh, left, right, you could, but then you can also then expand that up and down. And uh, here you've got the kind of way in which um, the repetition is applied, which is uh, pretty useful. So you've got different ones again. So very similar to, and this is where it attempts to like blur the borders in between your clips. Very similar to the others, but uh, this is actually for, it does two things. Not only does it take your footage, because all the others happen within the area of the footage, whereas this actually expands further than the reach of your uh, clip, which is um, pretty cool in itself. So uh, we're going to scale that up and have a look at what else we've got. Threshold is kind of, so if you were looking at the, um, when I was doing the um, the cartoon effect, this is basically what it was doing is it was kind of creating this, and when I was talking about thresholding, this is what I was talking about. It's kind of the level of color that you're um, isolating within this kind of effect and it kind of pushes it and you can blend it here within the plugin itself. If you invert it, you get this weird weird result, but um, it can kind of be cool. Again, this isn't one I would use too much um, by itself, but if you use it alone and just get the luminance, then you can actually start to isolate. Um, like there, we're just blending it, but if you, you know, that in itself is quite a cool stylized look, and then you can, um, combine that with maybe a couple others like leave color and you can uh, there's one called leave color I'm not sure if it's in this section no but basically it isolates colors like you have in Sin City and so uh, that's actually pretty cool for getting some kind of cartoon effects as well so uh, lots of fun to be had with threshold uh, vignette is one of those quick ones that has been added because before you would have to make like a solid and then feather it off. If you watched any of the earlier um, video co-pilot tutorials you'll know all about that but basically it just adds a vignette onto your footage and for those of you that don't know vignette is kind of like a border like so what it does is it darkens the edges so that it draws the eye into the middle of your clip and that's the whole idea behind a vignette so uh, I think we're going to stop there because we're about halfway through the stylized plugins and we'll go through the rest of them in the next lesson. Thanks for watching guys see you next time.